Okay. While you're settling, you might uh, turn off your cell phones, mobile phones, if you've got them. That should be old news by now, shouldn't it? Unless you've got an i6 and you're just showing off. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Of course, you read the manual, you know how to turn it off. New phone and all that. So, anybody here tonight who this, for whom this is their first MSIA event? First one. Oh, thank you. Welcome. And here. Well done. Hey, we've got a tiny one here. You're getting an early start, Alina. Good job. And you've got the best seat in the house. Yeah, I saw that. She had her clothes sitting there warming the seat for her. Okay, what else have we got here? I'm going to cut to the chase with all these notes because there's about 55 pages and I don't think you need to hear all that, right? Right, so you're in agreement now. We've got consensus. Okay, nice deep breath and we'll have peace as well. Now, this event is sponsored by the Movement of Spiritual and Awareness, Peace Theological Seminary, and the purpose of MSA is to teach souls transcendence. So that's what John Morton will be focusing on tonight. Now, this is also sponsored by Peace Theological Seminary. Now, these are long words, I know, if you've never heard them before. But that's the educational part of MSIA, which is the summary for Movement to Spiritual Inner Awareness. You, you got that already, didn't you? Try this, yes. Okay. Now, the point of MSA is that John Roger founded it. And we'll be playing a little DVD shortly, which includes some information from him. Because he's simple but profound teachings on soul transcendence. One of the things we do in a gathering like this is to call in the light. So if that's new to you, you'll be able to just be cool and listen, participate. We do a thing called chanting the Ani Hue. Hue being an ancient name for God it goes back way to the beginning. It essentially means God, a spiritual frequency, not an old dude with a long white beard sitting on a throne somewhere. This would be more the essential spiritual form. So we reach to that place. Ani is a prefix which has an empathy frequency. So when we invoke this as an Ani hue chant, we're really blessing each other and acknowledging that divinity. And if you haven't heard it before, please, you can chant along with us or just listen. Now, after we've called in the light and done a few of these little chants, we're going to cut straight to a DVD. And then after that, I'll introduce John Morton, who I'm pretty sure you're really here to see and listen to. So, if that's good, I'm good. You're good. Nice deep breath then. In and out. And let the day go, let the travel go, let the driving go, let the coffee go. One more deep breath and out. Father, Mother, God, we call ourselves forward into the light of the Holy Spirit, the light of the Christ, and the light of the traveler. We ask that this light be present with us here this evening and throughout this night, that it surrounds, fills, and protects us, bringing forward that which is Indeed, in the name of the highest good for us and for all concerned. Above all, thy will is done, Father. And we ask for a blessing this evening on all present, on all levels, including John and Lee. And all those concerns you may have just into the light. And so it is. And I, you,
as the teachings of soul transcendence porque las enseñanzas de la trascendencia del alma states establecen that through the spiritual heart do we find god que nosotros encontramos a dios a través del corazón espiritual if you want to soul transcend si quieres trascender el alma the one thing you must do. Hay una cosa que debes hacer. You must get in the way to do soul transcendence. Debes ponerte en el camino de la trascendencia del alma. You can't do it your way. No puedes hacerlo a tu manera o en tu camino. You got to do it the way that is set up for it to happen for you. Tienes que hacerlo de la manera que está establecido de que sucede cómo sucederá para ti. If you could do it your way, si pudieras hacerlo a tu manera, you would already be doing that. Ya lo estarías haciendo. You wouldn't be here. No estarías acá. You would be doing it out on the streets with everybody else. Estarías haciéndolo en la calle con todo mundo. Well, here's the secret. He aquí un secreto. It won't be a secret in a few minutes. Y no será un secreto en unos cuantos minutos. <laughs> Everyone on the planet. Todo mundo que está en el planeta. At night when they're sleeping. Cuando están durmiendo por la noche. Does soul transcendence? Hacen trascendencia del alma o la trascendencia del alma. They go up in their spirit soul body. Se van en el cuerpo del alma en su espíritu. Into the spirit levels of God. A, a los niveles espirituales de Dios. Rejuvenate the soul. Rejuvenecen el alma ya. Bring it back down into the body. Y la regresan al cuerpo. And then it rejuvenates the body again. Y eso rejuvenece el cuerpo de nuevo. Then you get up and you start going the next day. Y luego te levantas y continúas con tu día. Feel the expansion of your consciousness. Siente la expansión de tu conciencia. Taking a deep breath. Inhala profundamente. That's God's energy. Esa es la energía de Dios. And if you look past the physical, y si ves más allá de lo físico, you'll see the source of your deliverance. Verás el, la fuente de tu libertad. Because God will show itself through us. Porque Dios se mostrará a and, través nuestro. And we end up seeing the beauty. Y terminaremos viendo la belleza. That is an indication of God's presence with us. Que es una indicación o una señal de la presencia de Dios con nosotros. Maybe you don't have enough proof yet. Quizás no tengas o no cuentes con pruebas o evidencia suficiente. You may have to study longer. Quizá tengas que estudiar por más tiempo. But once that happens to you. Pero una vez que eso te suceda. You go from mundane living te dirigirás de una vida mundana into illumination a la iluminación and enlightenment y al alumbramiento Parush Bashan. Okay. Who's John Morton? I'm glad you asked. He's a really neat guy. He's also a, a really great father. He's, I wouldn't know about this side, but I hear he's a very good husband. <laughs> but I was there when the keys were passed to him in the late 80s by John Roger for the travel of consciousness. I was there for the first couple of his personal life seminars. And what I can tell you about John is this. He hasn't missed a beat since then, or if he has, he kept it quiet. Like the rest of us do, you know how you do that. But he has that magnificent place called the Traveller Consciousness. And I invite you to be open to getting your touch in with that tonight. Sure, you can go, I'm not sure if I like that or if I do. But the heart is what we're talking about. So, please welcome John from your heart to his and mine, of course. Thank you. You go first. No, I'm going to put you first. Here. There you go. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> so here's, here's proof I'm a good husband. <laughs> right here. This is, a, this is my wife, <laughs> Lee Taylor Young. Oh. And you have complete freedom to say whatever you like. 
Oh, I thought I was going to be sitting down. Here I am. I'm just so happy to be in Australia, I have to tell you. I, yes, Richard Price. <laughs> I just really love you all. I'm just tickled I get to be here again this year. You're just a fabulous community. We travel a lot over the world, and, and you're just stellar in my eyes. So this is thrilling to be here. And this is my little new friend. <laughs> And to be continued. So yes. you, you can take that right with you, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to check. Did we figure out uh, online transmission? We did. So thank you for the light. Because um, often in what we do, and well, I'm going to stay with the theme, soul transcendence, uh, we don't have it figured out. So if, if you came here, especially those of you who are new, but even if, uh, shall we say, uh, you're well experienced, new and well experienced, uh, that often we do find that we don't know clearly what's going on. Uh, so you're, you're kind of in the correct place. And what's really good about that is we don't have to because it's already figured out. Uh, so then we find that if we have a willingness to be open, that there's an opportunity to come into a greater experience of who we are. And all kinds of things that would help us be clear come forward uh, so that we have greater understanding of who we are in this world. And uh, you know, to me, that's something we all need to figure out one way or another, um, even if we try to avoid the question who am I? What is this world? What am I doing here? These kinds of things. Um, but if you have those questions, then this is a place where we confront them you know, directly, as powerfully as we can. And uh, just some things to uh, remind us and uh, again introduce those of you who are new, um, that we don't consider what we're doing as a formalized religion, even though uh, in the United States, uh, where this was first organized, uh, legally it is a, a religion that's classified that way, um, but it also makes it a charitable organization. And I do consider that we are charitable, so we're not for profit, uh, <laughs> which sounds kind of funny because I think, well, we are in what that means to the common good. So we would want profitability that translates into prosperity, abundance, uh, wealth. I would say at the core of what we're doing is something John Roger uh, often spoke of as health, wealth, and happiness. Um, obviously, he didn't invent those words. You know, those are words I think that everybody, regardless of uh, culture or creed, that we all want health, wealth, and happiness anywhere in the world. Uh, and that's something I'm sure just looking around uh, and whatever comes to the news, we realize, well, it should be nice if there was more of that in the world. Uh, so I do consider we have the keys uh, to health, wealth, and happiness because they're in our heart. We were born with them. So it's not like um, I have them and uh, how much is it worth to you to have them? It's not like that. It, it's uh, more of a fellowship that we, we come together, we congregate uh, to uh, find something that's in common with us all. I'm reminded of some words uh, attributed to Jesus in the Bible, that when two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst of them, or there I am with you also. Uh, that I consider that that's also who we are, what we are. So there is something sacred going on here, um, but it's also something that's not really serious. Um, sometimes it's profound so that it, it makes us quiet. And in a way, um, words need to be unspoken, or if we tried to speak, it would be indescribable. So we, we go after that as well. Um, I, 
I'm reminded also that I heard John Roger say many, many times, and why would I be bringing up John Roger's name? Well, he's the founder. I think Andrew mentioned that. Um, but he's not someone who invented what this is. So it's something that's timeless. It's something we could look upon as eternal. But you know, among the many profound things he said is, uh, if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. So he was a fun-loving person. Those of you who got to know him, uh, I'm sure you witnessed that in some way, uh, that he loved to have fun and he was not someone who made, wanted to make things serious. Uh, and so there was often a lot of laughter in our meetings. Uh, so I hope we find that. Uh, I know we've found some already, but let's consider that's part of how we would know we're doing what this is, is there would be laughter. Uh, but there'd also be great loving, caring, and sharing. Uh, so I, I see some nodding heads because some of you recognize those words because we often refer to the blessings. Um, and that's a, a book uh, I put out a while back called The Blessings Already Are, followed by You Are the Blessing. So there's two of them so far. <laughs> and I'm laughing because uh, John Roger has, I, I, I stopped counting after 50 books, and then there's uh, these things called discourses, which we'll talk a bit about tonight as well, uh, so that when you are through, uh, let's say, whenever you leave tonight, uh, you have the ability to fully participate in what we do. Uh, and how do I know that? Because you already have the ability. You came in with it. So it isn't like somehow I'm going to instruct you in such a way that you uh, finally find out what are the keys to your life, what are the keys to fulfilling you. Um, but I certainly would support you. And I consider that we are a movement as uh, an organization that supports people in the living truth of who you are uh, and to make that more and more a blessing for yourself and the world. So if you're interested in that, uh, get ready. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go here. So I'm gonna remind myself a bit here about what I've been called upon to do. Okay, so we just had a, a, what we call a moment of peace, which was some words from John Roger on the video. Uh, and we consider what we describe, what we do in the movement of spiritual inner awareness is soul transcendence. And a couple of years ago, we had a conference in Los Angeles. We have an annual conference, and uh, that uh, was the focus for the whole conference. And this workshop here tonight and the one we're going to do the next two days are from that conference. Uh, so I think this is the, the only the second time that this particular workshop was offered. So it was originally offered at the conference. So uh, we like to bring uh, to Australia the best of what we have to offer. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Notice I have lots of pages I could refer to, but I like to consider that it's all in me to share with you very directly. So the next word on the page is breathing. Is anybody not breathing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe look at your neighbor if they're uh, slumped and, yeah, okay. Yeah, somebody actually told me today uh, and uh, you're probably here, and I don't need to know. Uh, I may recognize you're here right now, but there's a place not so far from here called Crow's Nest, right? And, and so uh, what she was sharing with me today was that she was walking on the street in the center of Crow's Nest when uh, I'll give you my version, so it may not quite be as accurate as the version I was told today, but... Uh, this woman basically fell to the pavement and then she realized that she was having difficulty, uh, knelt down and in some way wanted to try to make it uh, comfortable or, or to do what, whatever was there to do. Uh, 
Uh, and the fact is that the woman passed in that situation. She died on that spot. Um, and, you know, something that I would remind us that it, it's like an up and coming feature of living in this world. <laughs> Maybe it's not been told to you in that way, uh, but it, it's like an inevitability that something like that is going to occur. And, and what we do in some ways is preparation for that. Um, and then notice that we're breathing and we've been doing that for a while, even uh, someone like, a, looks like Elena here, who's, uh, how old are you? Six, okay. You're probably not the youngest one in the room because I see some others over here. But even in the case of Elena or even younger, you know, we haven't really been doing it all that long. That would be one view. And the other view is how many breaths have you taken by now, Elena? Have you counted? <laughs> like who could give that number? And even if we give the number that it's changing now. So it's, it's one more and then it's one more. And of course we can relax with that. We can consider, well, it's been going good so far with the responsibility we have in the world to breathe. And yet in one breath, we'd be out of here. Right? So whenever that is, then we go somewhere. Um, and that's something that's important to consider in what we do. We focus on where do we go? So when there is the last breath, where do we go? Anybody uh, been at the birth of the first breath? Now see, all the hands should be going up. Because <laughs> you were there. Uh, <laughs> and then you go, oh, that was a trick question, but not so tricky, really. But that breath came from somewhere, that spark. Uh, and as much as our scientists uh, are very adept at giving us the reasons why and how things happen in the world, how that first breath occurs, you know, how it comes in and ignites something. And yes, I understand that there's often uh, something before that, like about nine months. So even if we backed up to how did one cell join up with another cell? And somebody was asking me about that today. <laughs> you know, with the intention of bringing someone forward who would take their first breath and then being willing to provide a cell. Like, I have a cell looking for another cell. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the simplicity of how we came into this world. Uh, one cell somehow got together with another cell, but something else was involved that is like a spark, a spark of the divine. So we find that we can enjoin ourselves with the spirit through the breathing. We're not the first. You know, there are many, many practices in the world that rightly so focus on the importance of breathing, coming more and more into harmony with breathing. Maybe you're experiencing yourself do that now because I bring it up. And hopefully you're already attuned that you want to be in harmony with each breath, that that's in your favor. And it's in the favor of anybody who loves and cares for you. Because if you stop that, <laughs> then we become concerned, rightfully so, that we would attend to you uh, and there was a question today about this occurrence that happened in the crow's nest. And it was kind of like a why question or was it, is it okay? Um, did I miss my responsibility? Did I miss my opportunity? You could say even was it my fault? Could I have somehow prevented that? So I, I took a look. Uh, 
And when I took a look, I, I did something that we all have the opportunity to do in the movement of spiritual inner awareness, and that is to see the truth of it. And that we have witness to it, we have knowledge of it. Uh, and so that's one of the precepts of what we're looking at here is that we all have access to what is true and that there's a great knowing uh, and there's a great knower. Let's be simple about it and call that great knower God and there would be many other terms. Let's just give a demonstration of that. Does anybody have a, another term for God uh, that you could call out? Love. Love. Great spirit. Kind. kind. Anybody have another linguistic approach to it? Source. Source. How about, uh, what was that one? Allah. Allah, okay. Now that, you might say, would be another name, like even another language, or sometimes it's, it's something, well, it means something different, like the God of. What we're looking to is that there's one God, that out of God comes all things. Uh, again, we're not the first to look in that way or consider in that way. And that in that same God is also the source of our breathing. So when we're in harmony and awareness of our breathing, we're close to our creator. We're close to how our creator is in tune with us in harmony and rhythm with us, that there's a rhythm to the breathing. Um, it's also been called the holy breath. Anybody familiar with that term? Okay. And then we become more familiar with the holy breath, that it's one breath for all. And that's an interesting way to look at it, that we're all breathing in the same breath, even if it's in different order or different succession. But sometimes we can do that together, like everyone take a breath in. <laughs> everyone take a breath out. Notice it needs to continue. But we could do something like hold our breath. Did anyone ever do that game when you're uh, a young'un, where you, you see how long you can hold your breath or somebody squeezes you, and uh, then you start seeing stars, and then sometimes you pass out. <laughs> Anybody do that one? See, there's a few hands like, yeah, I did that game. And even there's something that we could uh, meet up with various levels of our awareness. Where is that? Oh, okay. So I'm going to change the order because it just got changed on me. Um, we do something we refer to as spiritual exercise. I would also call it worship. When we come into worship and we come together in worship, and if you're uh, joining us, um, you know, sometimes we do our version of hymns. Often they're creative, uh, meaning people originate the words or they originate the music as a devotion, as a way of coming into praise. Um, some of that can be hilarious. Some of it can be off-key, out of tune. Um, Sometimes it's, um, I, you know, I'm not a music student, but it, it's the idea that it doesn't stay in its cadence or something like that. Um, so in a way, we have awkwardness here. Anybody ever experience yourself as awkward? <laughs> I, I think I'm going to put it two hands. <laughs> Both, both sides, frontward and backward. Um, and that's part of the human experience. Another way we look at ourselves is 
we are souls having a human experience. And, you know, that we're, uh, what was Madonna's song, uh, kind of like to that effect? I mean, I'm a material girl or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and I think there was another way she uh, related to it. Um, and I, I look at that, that, that this is so, that it has all these versions of how we would relate to our creator. You know, even in the ones that we would call dark or evil or terrible, you know, that there's something there that we still have a creator. And uh, here's another precept. God loves all of its creation. And in this world, that's a tall order, or, or maybe it's a low order, like that we have to take it to the lowest place. We have to take it to the darkest place. And, uh, you know, my view of that is when we're called upon to love what is the most difficult, what is the darkest, uh, the most painful or unjust, that that can be a measure of our willingness to be one with God, to be willing to stand in and do what God would do in the flesh. You know, that, that what would God do in this situation? Uh, there's a song I, I played recently at uh, one of our events. I first heard it from Elton John. I think it's called Love is the Answer or something like that. Love is the opening door. Love is what we came here for. No one could offer you more. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> See, this is my wife. She was laughing the loudest. Uh, even if she was in the back of the room... So if they, they need somebody in that role of the good wife, you're up. Um, yes, you know, that this is how I see us coming into communion with our soul nature, that it's a communion with love, that love is another name of God. It's another way of calling to God. Uh, again, this is not new, you know, we don't, have it copyrighted. Uh, if we could uh, package it and sell it so that we had a bottle of unconditional love guaranteed that if you even taste it, you're completely in love. It'd probably sell pretty well. Um, but the, I, I would want you to consider that you are such a bottle. You're a container of love, and it's just a matter of allowing it to come from the well, the source within you, and this is what we specialize in. So when we do spiritual exercise, we do something that Andrew introduced us to earlier. Uh, so we do an invocation, which I see as a preparation. It's an acknowledgement of who are we with here when we come into worship and that we're with our God, and that we would call out. And it only takes one voice to do this. And words are not required, so we can do it in silence. And often, we do do it in silence, so we're going to do some of that here, uh, where we come into the way of listening to God. And I need to check. So do you have that... Uh, Recording from John Roger doing the hue, did that make it? <laughs> we checked about the other recordings. But uh, if not, I can do a version, but I'm just checking to see if you, you caught that in the, uh, at least the, the one I have. So it's, it's Jared doing the uh, HU chant. It's about seven minutes long. I heard John Rogers' voice. <laughs> so is that a yes or? Okay. All right. 
then uh, if you don't, I'm going to introduce it, and if you don't have it, I'll, I'll do my version of it. Um, but it's from a packet called The Inner Worlds of Meditation. That's also a clue for Richard back there. And it will guide us through a name of God that uh, we often chant out loud, H-U. And I want you to consider that we're doing uh, soul attunement, spiritual attunement when we do this. When I first chanted uh, this uh, at a, a John Roger uh, home seminar, and it wasn't in John Roger's home, it was in somebody else's home, but it, it was somebody was playing a recording uh, of one of his talks, and that person, like Andrew tonight, introduced the Hu chant. And I had a, a very powerful experience I'd never had in my life. Uh, very profound, kind of startling at the same time, because it, it was something I didn't understand that I experienced uh, physically. Uh, but the more powerful part of it was not physical, by far. And then I had an experience that something uh, powerful beyond my understanding could take place while I was in the body and, and that if I could just stay like a, uh, a rider on a bucking bronco. Do you have bucking broncos here in Australia? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe you call it something else. Uh, but you can, it's like a horse that's behaving uh, wildly like horses can do because it's in their nature. Uh, and perhaps it's also in their nature, like I didn't say you could get on my back. Like, who said you could get on my back? You know, that could be their nature also. Um, but it was like if I could stay with the energy, I could also have a greater experience of something I was looking for, something I was praying for for a long time. And also I had the awareness that it was something I was experiencing uh, that I didn't even know I was praying for. And it was still something... Uh, Right now, I don't know how to tell you what it is. But I, what I would say is it was my ignition, like uh, being on uh, the launch pad in a very powerful rocket ship, uh, something that could go the, at the speed of light and you could feel it bodily to whatever degree you could handle that. Like, I don't know what G-force I was in, but it was multiple. That was my feeling, um, and yet I knew I was, I, was ha I was being transported into the movement of spiritual inner awareness. So I'm introducing that, and meanwhile, uh, it's also an opportunity to be in the company of the saints uh, in a nice pasture somewhere where it's all relaxed and we're all, uh, is this? oh, this is like a... Uh, blade of grass. You ever chewed on a blade of grass that's it's perfectly ripe, kind of juicy? Maybe. <laughs> Something you might want to have as an experience sometime. Uh, but the way I have this is it's like a, it's in a beautiful meadow, a beautiful serene place, completely relaxed uh, all, all at once. So maximum g-force and maximum serenity at the same time. You got it? Okay, so really all you need to do is listen and in some way John Rogers' words, it's auditory, will be guiding us um, and just follow along and uh, you can do this out loud. That's the opportunity. And I think there's some parts of this that will be silent. So just listen and here we go. call in the light. After we call in the light for the highest good, a very effective way to work with this is to do some deep breathing before you begin the chant. Breathe in and out five times, feeling your body fill up with the light energy on each breath, bringing yourself into calm 
into your center as you breathe those of you who have done the walking in the light can do your probably won't want to do this more than twice each day. So we're going to start and we'll chant the you 15 times by breathing in. And let me explain that to you again. After five breaths, begin the chant by breathing in and chanting the you as you exhale. Do this for five breaths. Then repeat the process. Five breaths without the chant. Then five breaths with the chant. That will add up to 15. So we'll take in our breaths first. That's one. Just receive the air in. Two. Three. Four. And the fifth one. Now we start over and chant for five times. Breathing in and chant as you exhale. Five breaths without the chant. Number one, breathe in. Number two, in. Number three, in. Keep it calm and relaxed. Number four, in. Five in. And we start with one and chant. Breathe in. You. chanting one two in three four five 
Now we'll start breathing in one and chanting. You. You. Breathing in and out quietly. One in. Two in. Three in. Four in. Five in, this builds up terrific energy. Once you've done the series of 15 hue chants, we suggest waiting at least 15 minutes before you do it again. You probably won't want to do this more than twice each day. It can lead to some pretty strong pressures in the head. So if you're wondering where that's from, uh, there's a packet from John Roger, and I think, uh, yes, uh, there's some of this I also present. Uh, it's got a series of uh, different kinds of exercises. Uh, there's an introduction to spiritual exercises and meditation, inner realms of consciousness, breathing meditation, a raw meditation. Uh, some sacred tones, uh, various names that we work with, flame meditation, how to do ranging in your awareness, uh, the so hong, meditation on the color rays of light, there's water meditation, and uh, John Roger delivering what's referred to as the spiritual promise. So there's a lot in this CD packet. Um, are there some of these available on hand tonight, or is it something they would order? I'm just checking if anybody knows that information. Okay, so there's some available, and I think the room's actually right in here, but then you go that way rather than charge the curtains or something like that. All right. Um, we have an exercise planned for you tonight, and... Uh, uh -huh. I see people ready to hand out. You can go ahead and start handing out the uh, information sheets. Is it th three questions, right? Okay. And, and I'll take one of those as well. There's one up here already? Oh, there it is. Okay, very good. Then uh, here you go. So I'm going to bring up my wife, Lee, again, because it's another opportunity to show her off and uh, demonstrate her gifts. She has many gifts. Do you need your glasses? Oh, I do. Okay. <laughs> and also, um, we're going to give you the, the benefit of a beautiful microphone as well. So there's three questions that uh, you'll be involved with with a partner. So it's designed to be you and one other person as an exercise. Um, you can also, we got space in the room so you could move your chairs uh, so you could face each other ideally. Um, and then you can sit down. You could do it standing up. 
but we just figure you'll be more comfortable. So if you're looking for uh, the three questions, uh, raise your hand and somebody will, I'm sure, bring them by for you. Okay. So when it's time to start the exercise, uh, one partner is going to be asking the three questions and the other person is going to be responding to the questions. And we're going to extend the turn so the likelihood is you'll have multiple opportunities to answer each question when it's your turn. Uh, and this is an opportunity to go deeper, to experience whether there's new information for you with each question, uh, to open yourself up, there's an, an awareness exercise we're doing tonight which has to do with your soul that we would invite you so that you can experience your soul talking. And maybe you say, I do that all the time. My soul's always talking for whatever I say. And perhaps there's another way that you could bring in your attunement with what we're already doing tonight and your intention so you have a deeper experience of how your soul would communicate and what your soul would have to share with you as information. So there's the intention for the exercise is to have an experience of soul awareness, your soul. So we would call in the light with our partner. We'll do that together. Uh, and I'll say a little bit more about that. And then I am going to ask my partner the first question. How am I aware of soul right now? I think that's how are you aware of soul right now? Uh, I'm aware of uh, experience of expansion, like as if I'm wide in my awareness. Second question. And I'm going to change this up so it's in the second person. What do you tend to put in the way of this awareness? Uh, the content of the awareness on the first question, I want to say, has a lovingness to it, like an inclusion. What I put in the way is, uh, is when I get busy in my mind and I think I have have-tos that I have to complete and they sort of drive me. Uh, and then it seems to shut down the expansion and the loving and the inclusion. Now the third question. What could help you to be more aware of yourself as a soul? It's to hold my awareness in the expansion, connection to my heart, feeling that connection, and still do whatever it is I need to be doing. Did that... What's the question again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I could, ask, I could answer that with repeating the question, what would help you to be more aware of yourself as a soul? Yeah. It, it would be attention to the soul of me, that expansion of me, holding to that attention at the same time as I do my life in the 10% level. Now I'd go back to the first question because it's still her turn because we haven't heard the magic gong yet. So that would be, how are you aware of your soul right now? I'm aware of happiness, joy. <laughs> and then I would repeat the second question and keep repeating the questions until we hear the gong and, and I think we're about to hear the gong, there it is. <laughs> And so the gong would start your turn, then end your turn, and we'll say something during each turn. So between the turns, we'll have something for you as directions and awareness. Uh, so each person will have an opportunity to answer the three questions. Uh, we're gonna give you about five minutes to do this. And um, encourage you to keep having a deeper awareness of what your soul is communicating to you and to share that with your partner. Now, don't you go anywhere. <laughs> so, any questions? 
about how to do the exercise. Okay, well, I'll just repeat it after you ask it. So the question is, are we changing the, uh, the languaging so it goes to the second person? I recommend that. Um, the entire time I was looking at the, the, the information for me as the facilitator, I always saw this as an exercise where it's asked in the second person to your partner. So uh, it's, it was like, what? Who changed the, <laughs> the languaging here? And, and so it's a little bit of a surprise. So yes, ask the question so it's to your partner in a way they would understand is for them instead of their answering about what they think about you. Do you get that? <laughs> okay. Because if I, if I ask Lee, how am I aware of my soul right now? <laughs> That could be fun. <laughs> well, go for it, yes. Uh, should we give you an option? Uh, you, can, you can decide if you want it in the first person or the second person, uh, which could be interesting. I, I, see, I see the value. There could be some profound value for you to experience that you have the knowing to tell uh, your partner what their soul experience is. <laughs> okay, maybe that's, let me see here. I mean, I gotta turn the page and see. I'm really curious now. It is in the first person. So uh, however this was written up, it was written, I think, to have you do the exercise for your partner so you're actually answering for your partner. I mean, your partner's gonna answer for you, how am I aware of my soul right now? Oh, okay. Wow. You like that? Yeah. Okay. Example. So that's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, okay. All right, all right, all right. So that's it. So. So how am I aware of my soul right now? Uh, you're just doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't need, I have a microphone here, so. What do I tend to put in the way of this awareness? Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, I, I know what it is. Uh, uh, sort of getting uh, really overly involved in details. Like, what, what could help me be more... <laughs> Are you ready to continue? <laughs> Uh, what could help me be more aware of myself as a soul? Relax <laughs> and move out of your mind into your heart and uh, speak from there. Did you get it? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't know if somebody like Spirit changed the words up on me today. <laughs> But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this, uh, that it, it's a valuable opportunity to have that experience with this exercise, to let your partner speak for your soul awareness uh, and listen to what they see and hear. So, so good, good question. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else have a, a question about how to do the exercise? Like which, which person? Maybe we can go into third person impersonal or... <laughs> <laughs> like, if God spoke, what would God say? <laughs> All right. So there's a question there? You raise your hand. Would anybody like to work with Vic? So there's Vic. Anybody want to? There you go. Look. You got it?
Ah, okay. So the question is, if you're just meeting your partner, so this is an opportunity to come into soul awareness that God is a soul, like an oversoul. So just go ahead and tune in and allow yourself, you could say the privilege, uh, the sacred honor, even if uh, you have no clue, are you accurate or not, just go ahead and do it as an exercise. And we're not telling you that this is uh, the gospel truth, whatever your partner says, or that you should believe it. We're just having an exercise where we open ourselves up into the experience of soul awareness. Okay, it's getting deeper by the moment, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so let's uh, find partners and you can move around. Please be mindful of uh, this light stand and the camera. If you're looking for a partner, raise your hand. If you're looking for a partner, raise your hand. Look around to see if you see people with their hands raised and move to where they are. Anybody else looking for a partner? Here's somebody else I'm pointing to looking for a partner. Uh, any assistant available? Okay, here comes an assistant, or you could go to the assistant right there. All right, that was excellent. Um, now let me have your attention in the way of your quiet. Thank you. So let's keep with the claiming, with the profound opportunity that's here. So looking at your partner, consider that you're introducing yourself to another face of your soul. And that we're placing this all in the light. Uh, there's a light that comes in through the Christ. And that also means anointed of God. So let's bring that in so that whatever are the illusions, whatever are the disturbances, any form of negativity can be cleared, lifted, healed, and balanced. So that what comes forward here is a living truth serving the highest good of all concerned. That each and every one of us are bathed in this light, surrounded, protected, and filled in this light, that we open ourselves up to what we call the mystical traveler consciousness through the Holy Spirit, through the consciousness of beloved God, that we're here to be served in your blessings of healing and understanding and whatever we came here to have lifted, to also be an offering, a gift, a way of bringing what is needed in whatever we say or hear. And whatever does not serve that purpose, we release, we forget, we move it up into the nothingness from which it came so that we are here as your beloved to be in this profound opportunity and communion. And we give thanks for this and whatever this can do as a shared blessing for all of the world and even into all of the creation. Beirish Beishan. The next thing you'll hear is the gong to begin the first partner's turn.
keep going. <laughs> I got a direct message from your soul. Keep going.
Okay, uh, this is your soul speaking. That was the uh, gong to change the turn. So we'll just switch the roles and, and, and maybe some of you already did that and that's okay. Uh, so this is the opportunity for whoever has been asking the questions uh, to now answer them because your partner will be asking the questions and vice versa. And consider that you're in a very deep experience and opportunity to witness to the soul both in what is said and what is heard and then something beyond all that in the presence of the soul that is here uh, to witness to we're all beloved we're all surrounded filled and protected in beautiful light and love here we go <laughs>
about or with or to the light. Meanwhile, do the exercise. <laughs> so you're, you're radiating the light that is your soul to your partner. And, and it has this beautiful quality that it penetrates. So it has the ability to be felt by your partner deeply. So it comes from your soul and it goes to your partner's soul. And uh, there's a kind of illumination that goes on when we do this. So we each get brighter. We get brighter to send the light and whatever we're sending the light to takes on the quality of the light so that we could see the partner, and that's all of us now, in more illumination. And in order for me to do that, I look inwardly. But I could also have the experience that it's in some way reflecting outwardly. So that I'm touching to the light inwardly, but I'm seeing it outwardly. So that maybe it takes on like a hue, <laughs> uh, an aura, you know, a, an illumination quality, then it can get into the room so the room has a quality that there's more illumination here. Sometimes we would experience it like sparkly. We can also feel that. So then you might feel tingling of some kind or it can come as warmth. It could come as a kind of a soothing, cooling energy. Um, I'm doing what else? can also lift and release. So if there's anything you would be open to that you don't need, that's not serving you, uh, to make that easy, any negativity that's not for your highest good, then this light could release. Kind of like incubation. And let's consider that it, it has a quality that would also let you see or understand. So if you've had confusion uh, or you've been wanting greater understanding or greater clarity in your life, then the light could help you have more clear thoughts, more clear intention, more clear awareness about what is in your life. So then the light can go to all these things. So whatever you're related to, the light that's coming from the soul could then go out to all these things so that everything in your life is being sent the light. Everybody. So everything like where you live, where you work, 
Anything that comes to mind? Anyone that comes to mind? This quality of the light is also what we experience when we do spiritual exercise, when we do worship. That there's an atonement that's already present in the light. Um, I remember when John Roger helped clarify those of us who were studying with him, wanting to follow his teaching about we call ourselves forward into the light. Uh, and that we had a way of saying, let's call in the light. And what he wanted to remind us is the light's already present. It's our awareness that makes the difference. It's our intention to have the light be more involved. So, and we're talking about a light that lifts and heals and helps. Uh, so it's an energy. And when we call upon this reference, we call the name of God. And it could be God, or it could be someone said Allah earlier. You know, whatever that frequency is for you, or the way you would call it forward, that's important. So we're not doing uh, indoctrination here. We're doing open spiritual awareness, soul awareness, and looking at what that presents to us. Appreciating, again, the, the young ones, the ones in small bodies. We can all be young. <laughs> Go ahead and claim that for yourself. But the young bodies, uh, thank you for your quiet, your willingness to move into the silence in your way. And, and the demonstration. And I, I see your smile, too. I think that's a sign. When you can get a young one to smile at you, that's something uh, that's very real and, and also makes me smile. On the program tonight is... Um, an invitation to talk to you about the mystical traveler consciousness. Uh, often we wait a while before we introduce that term. I don't know what page it is in the discourses. You know, like, well, I might as well tell you about the discourses because that's also an assignment uh, to share with you this evening. Discourse 8. Yeah? Is that the name of the discourse eight, Mystical Traveler? Okay. Mystical Traveler Consciousness, okay. Thanks for that reminder. Uh, and then let's just say at some point in the first eight discourses, I'm sure if, if it's the title is on the cover of discourse eight, then the likelihood is it's also in the pages. But I, I don't know at what point in our teachings, and we refer to our teachings as the discourses or the soul awareness discourses. Uh, and they're all brought forward from John Rogers' information, his teachings. Uh, and it's really what activates what we're doing. So it's particularized by the name, but it's also a reference 
that is from the consciousness of our creator. So it's a God consciousness. What I look at about it is that it would go by many names and has gone by many names. So we would be able to find it previously. We would be able to find it in the teachings that have been here long, long ago. So from ancient teachings. And that if you read the discourses, then you find out for the most part it's not really new. If you were to consider all of the information that was here uh, that anyone has ever spoken or written, if we just did that, <laughs> and we tried to assimilate all of what that is, then we'd find out something like, well, you're not saying anything new here. You're just using different words to say the same thing. Okay. And some of that would be because we're in a different time now. And so there's an updating. If uh, we had any of the teachers, uh, just bring to mind any, any teacher that you could think of from any time, whether they're living or they've passed on long ago. Okay, Shakespeare. Confucius. Khabib. Buddha. Gautama, Lao Tzu. Galileo. Didn't quite hear that one. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. okay. El -may. Omar Khayyam. Okay. And it could go on. And, and let's consider that what we would intend here, uh, and let's, say, let's add some that are living, that are considered teachers, so uh, Dalai Lama heard that one, let's say Pope Francis, so you could bring that one in. We could bring in other leaders who have beautiful information, teachings, not just for those who follow them, but for the world. Uh, that's often how I experience a teaching that transcends. It's something that can move into a culture for the first time and that culture can also relate to it. Maybe it's something that shifts that culture into a new way of being and expressing. But if we had all those teachers here, with all that wisdom uh, and awareness, then what would come together, what would integrate from all the teachings that would clarify it. Um, there's a, a seminar that John Roger did amongst thousands, uh, initiation molding the golden chalice. And the metaphor in the seminar was that in the process of purifying a chalice and making it a metal of the purest uh, substance, that it was a process that went through the fires and, and the melting and then the sifting, the filtering, the clarifying of what was considered impure. Uh, and that in some way we could say collectively as a humanity that we're in that evolution, and that we're evolving so that the impurities are being removed. Uh, and I'm sure if we considered all that's going on in the world at this time, I'd say, well, if anything, the impurities are intensifying uh, or becoming more powerful. Let me suggest that there's another way to look at it, that what is under the surface, what is in the unconscious is, is being surfaced to be purified, uh, to be cleansed, to be removed so that we can move on to a living love to a consciousness that loves all, to a consciousness that respects and honors uh, the diversity in our, our midst so that we would love all who come before us. But that's not something of weakness. It's, it's something that often calls upon our strength, our courage, uh, all we got in order to 
to do what we're here to do. So we looked that we can engage this divine nature that's been through the ages, through all the great teachings. Um, and maybe there's a question like, well, why would it come here? You know, why would the, the evolution of the teachings, the greatest teachings that have ever been, come into this? And my answer is because we seek that. We want that. Um, and it, it's something also that comes in a form that makes it ordinary, that allows it to be touchable so that we don't make it uh, a teaching that has rules and conformity and, and that kind of thing other than what it is inside each person so that we seek the truth wherever it's found. And to consider that we have access to a consciousness that we refer to as the traveler as a way of understanding how could we engage that, how could we call it forward. Not as a, a belief, but as a, a direct experience. So that what we're doing here is to invite you to have a greater experience of who you are, of the nature of yourself as a divine being, as a soul. Uh, and that it's not uh, a mission like uh, you have to, or I'm going to somehow get notches on my belt if I convert you, or something like that. That it really is done from within you as a spiritual unfolding. And the signs are that it uh, always works through loving. So I find the, uh, the test for th this consciousness is, is it true? And is it loving? And you can do that in the reverse order. Is it loving? And is it true? And if you can answer that it is both of those, then I would say go for it. And sometimes we find out that we thought something was loving or we thought something was true. And it, it later reveals that we were following something that was more like a fantasy or our own wishful thinking. To me, that's part of growing up, <laughs> that we, we learn where we place ourselves uh, in ways that are not true and that we need to wake up to that and move along. And that can be a process where uh, it doesn't have to be severe. It doesn't have to be a scolding or something like that. So we don't teach anything like punishment um, or that uh, there's a hell. I think the hells are of our own making, but they, they're powerful. Because when you start combining one person's belief in a hell with another person's belief in a hell, it can become something on the order of a mob uh, or the mob rules in some way in its dark thinking. And that to me is much more what's going on than anything of a supernatural nature. But you know, that's you know, what I experience. So uh, I've never met the devil, so I don't have any belief in what that is other than some people do. Uh, so I just look at it that we have the opportunity to come true to who we are and wake that up so it becomes much more of a process of heaven on earth. I have something uh, that's been prepared to share with you again with John Roger uh, about a little moment of uh, thousands of hours about what is the mystical traveler. So we're going to turn off our lights for a moment so we can watch the video of something John Rogers said about the mystical traveler. The work I do is called the mystical traveler. I just call it MT. The mystical traveler is an energy field that comes right out of the heart of God. It comes right out of this line here. It comes right out. It goes to the end of creation and extends back into the heart of God, and it never goes anywhere else but there. It stays on that all the time. It always is. It always exists. Here's the trick. On every level, it has to have an anchor point. In 63, I was chosen as an anchor point. 
when the mystical traveler consciousness appears, the shadows disappear. And in that moment, the warmth of that love turns all hearts towards it. And in that, the lifting nature appears automatic. The mystical traveler does not work in power. But love is not the sole answer. It works in a state of detachment and what it's working with. Of working with, but not being one of. And that is the state of freedom that all will go into, where we can be with somebody and not have to do the things that they are doing. We are not one of them. We can be on this planet, but not of this planet. And we can be in this body and not be this body. We are much more than we could ever hope to believe. There's only one thing, honest to God, that we have to remember, and that's the traveler who resides in your heart. When you have that and you maintain that, you are in grace. So, this statement here of the mystical traveler riding on this line of energy here, never born, never dies, always exists, is in everybody. It's in every one of us. It is a spark within the soul, a spark within the spirit, that is a whole spirit. I know one thing, our salvation is our loving. It's the keynote to everything. It's why we stay with each other. It's how we stay with each other. It's the abiding peace that deep inside, past all of our cynicism, skepticism, doubts and worries, there is a living God who lives in us. Just remember that when you look at people, you're seeing God in manifestation for he can't get out of his creation because he created us and he stuck with us. <coughs> Let's just make it worthwhile for each other because God already has found it worthwhile. Remember this, when he made you, he didn't use junk. Out of the very best. And when he looked at it and he's all through, he said, and it's good. But only God is good. Okay, uh, we have uh, allotted some more time this evening, and what I'd like to do is open it up uh, so that we can consider whatever is the soul awareness that you're experiencing now. And so you have the opportunity to share some of that experience. If there's something you want to inquire into, you want to ask about, that's another part of it. I already have a hand over here. So uh, we'll bring you a microphone. And then. <clears throat> My name is Stasha. Okay. And I just wanted to mentioned to you, on coming here I fell over and I, I hurt my right knee. But I'm not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> your breathing is what you're telling us. Uh, maybe that was part of that mention earlier, was just to make sure everybody's breathing, including Stasha. So good to have you breathing with us. And, and also that I I heard your invitation, even if it wasn't quite spoken directly, to uh, bring the consciousness of light and love and grace uh, so that whatever isn't necessary to that, that we would open ourselves up. Um, that there can be things like spontaneous healing. Another way of saying that is a miracle. Another way of saying that is it's natural, 
It's already in the order of what can be if we have the faith, the trust that we can change it. It's going to change anyway. There's nothing in this world that is static and not in movement. So it's all in movement. So we also have the opportunity to direct it toward what, it, what we want it to become. You know, that we would visualize your wellness. Uh, and we could picture that in whatever way we do so that we see uh, the skin in its perfect order. And whatever's going on that would let us know it's healing. I think sometimes we want proof of that, so we, we want a bruise or we want uh, a place where the scab can grow so that we know it's in the process of healing. But even a scab is a miracle if you think about it, that it's putting back and restoring things for us. And sometimes I think the scar is just a way of remembering that we had an injury and for the most part it's healed. And even if we carry things that are remnants of that, that we would send kind thoughts to the places in us that hurt or in some way seem that they're out of sorts, not aligned or not in the order that's balance and vitality. You know, so that we can ask for the light energy to come in and reorder that. <laughs> See this hand? You know, when I did this, it started placing energy. Um, and now it's not just doing it for you. And it doesn't have to stay static like this, but it, it's kind of a demonstration that I'm holding with the energy field because I can feel it. There's heat in this hand. Uh, there's kind of a surge so that I, I, I feel like I'm, uh, my hand is melting with the energy that's coming through it. And then I would also allow myself to be that instrument. I would invite you to be an instrument as well so that it's just not my opportunity, it's all of our opportunity to be instruments for the well-being, the goodwill towards others, for what we're going to do here in the next few days, <laughs> so that we're anchoring. Um, you could see it as a column of light. And so it's not just about the hand. The column could be the entire room, then the building. And just take it so that, aha, uh -huh, okay, uh, there was a uh, peace portal place today. Okay, that's in it now. Was that Heritage Park or something? Or what's that called? Centennial. Centennial Park, okay. All right. And then we just hold as that becomes something for the, the planet. Um, part of the demonstration is it doesn't have to take long. If we just bless the entire planet, <laughs> uh, because there was an invitation to bless a hurt knee, is your knee, right? Yes. Okay. But it became the blessing for the whole planet, and then in two or three minutes, we move through all of that to the degree that was necessary for us to hold in that focus. That's very effective. And then when we consider all the things that have gone before on the planet um, that we would consider our disturbances uh, and the causes of war and mayhem and calamity and the like, that a simple willingness to call in the blessing so the lift what can be lifted and clear it and then put it back in as an opportunity. John Roger mentioned that this consciousness works in freedom um, and that's where our patience really comes in. 
that um, in our own, own humanity, we tend to revert back to habitual forms of limitation, uh, of things that we hold in a, a negative form, because somehow we haven't allowed ourselves the freedom to let it go, that we still hold on to judgments, um, and that there are others who join in in this process. And the number is not important. The importance is that we would consider that all of the negativity could be released in the freedom of God's will, that none of it has to hold for another second. That's one of the invitations in soul transcendence, that we would hold out what is in spirit, what is in the heaven, that it could manifest here and that it was said long ago that it's already present here in our midst, it's at hand, uh, and that there are those who demonstrate what it looks like in the flesh, what it acts like in the world. Um, so it's been on the planet all along. You know, the, the spiritual transmission came first. Uh, and then our ability to hold that as young souls, as those souls who come in here to learn and grow. That's what's in motion. Uh, when we understand it, we would have patient like, like great elders, that we've all been there in our prior experience in some way. So we understand when people slip up or they forget, because we've done it plenty of times ourselves. And in some way, we're still human. So we also have the patience for ourselves when we still forget uh, or we don't quite watch where we're walking. <laughs> but there's no condemnation in that. So the sooner we can come into the, the laughter of it, that energy field of laughter often is healing. Anything else? So oh, thank you so much, okay. John. Thank, thank you. you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, okay. I see a hand over there. Thank you for helping me. Hi, John. Thank you. It's a very nice um, session. Can I ask a question about uh, the fantasy that you mentioned? Um, how do you define the fantasy and how can I become more aware and recognize when I'm in one? Um, <clears throat> well, the, let's call it the fantasy realm, sometimes the astral, sometimes the imaginary, and that that's a, a, a faculty. It's an ability that comes through uh, the psychic material creation. And so we all have uh, a fantasy life. I think we all understand that by now, that we can imagine what is not so. So there's a version of that which would be that's inaccurate to what it is. Um, but when we do that as an intention to move closer to what it is so that we would use our imagination toward a greater relationship I'm calling it what is, um, in part, so that we would understand uh, truth is alive. It's it's not something rigid like a monument, or it's moving, it's in motion. So what is would mean is what is it now? What is it now? What is it now? That we need to understand that we need to follow in awareness, and and that we're in a movement of awareness. Then we call that into a focus of spiritual awareness as the way to come into direct awareness with what it is. So that what it is is something beautiful, something loving. That's an always, not a sometimes. These are ways to know when your fantasies are real that I mentioned earlier. Is it real? Or I, should, I, I should say, is it loving? Well, maybe is the loving real? <laughs> Because we probably had that where somebody questioned our loving. 
or said, you could be more loving, or something like that, or I want you to be loving in a different way, a way that I like, that I think is loving. Uh, so sometimes it becomes that, like it's a subjective or conditional loving. Uh, and what we're looking at here would be a loving that loves all. So when you're fantasizing, does it work, would be another way to test it out. Is it functional? Um, so my fantasy says, I'm loving you. Well, does the person who's, who you're loving also have a fancy, or fantasy that you're loving them? And, and it's like, no, my fantasy is you're not quite loving me. Um, and this is where we start working it out. In my experience is often all parties are working it out. That there's nobody here that's done working it out. Notice I'm pointing to this one. So I'm working it out with you to a greater loving, to a greater knowing of what is, and that we need to know that doesn't um, come into something harmonious. You know, I had to find the word for it, um, and I, there may be a better word for it than that. But the harmoniousness with the loving would be that it, uh, everyone is in the experience of, of what that is. So we would have uh, an experience together that we're all in the loving. And then the loving is something beyond us. So it's already creating a greater loving. I hope, hope you uh, followed that. So the loving is a movement to a greater loving. And, and so we need to stay open in our awareness. Uh, so the loving is what becomes our direct experience and that others also communicate that to us. Anything else on that? No, okay. that's it. Thank you. I'm going to call on just to go ahead and uh, bring her a microphone. Um, there's a quality in uh, what I'm hearing tonight that I would refer to as the sound current. Anybody else hearing that quality? <laughs> and it's okay even if you say, well, I think so. Uh, that's all right. It's okay to claim this is part of how the imagination can be used uh, to reach toward what it is, to reach past um, what we perceive to something greater. And we can use the imagination as a bridge into the greater. So it is a higher consciousness than the physical. Uh, but, it, but another way of um, experiencing the sound curtain is in the silence. So there's a quality in the silence tonight. Uh, and then I would invite you to notice the silence, which may mean, well, in order to notice the silence, I would, in a way, turn off my um, rational mind so I'm not listening to the things of the world, but I'm still listening. So I allow my listening to expand to a higher order and a higher frequency of what's present. Um, that's another way of doing spiritual exercise, to be listening in a more and more open and expanded way. I'm ready for you, whoever got the microphone. I, I, I had something totally irreverent to say, and it feels totally inappropriate in the essence of... Well, that's perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> Just as a, if nothing else is something that would help ground us every once in a while, that we're still human. 
You know, it's like if somebody belches right now, that's human. You know, life goes on in these ways. So it was just something that popped into my mind when you were talking about the breathing thing. And I saw on eBay that somebody was selling air that Kanye West breathed <laughs> at a Kanye West concert, concert for $6,000. He was selling a jar of air. <laughs> she was a lady, right? <laughs> well, um, I have another version of that, and uh, it's from what we were doing earlier when we were bringing in the masters who have been with us at any time, uh, and then considering that we could invite them to be present with us in the room, and the air that they breathe, and, and that we're, we're, we are breathing that air, and that in some way uh, there is a spark of the divine, not just for the masters, but that we would have uh, What's been done for one has been done for all. So as, as we, we have that commonality you know, where we would be breathing a molecule that's been passed around <laughs> so that at some point we might consider there's a molecule that all the masters have been breathing. And now we're in some way sharing that while we're here tonight. Like I was asking uh, one of the youngins, like how many breaths have you breathed thus far in your life, let's consider how many breaths have we breathed in the room tonight. And what, has that been enough so that every single body could pass a molecule on to someone else for their breath? And then they would breathe it in and breathe it out and pass it on. And uh, did you ever see uh, these songs where they have a bouncing ball going on the lyrics? in the cadence of when is the lyric sung with the music. You know, to see the bouncing ball going around the room. And that we would want to pass that on so that it's, it's something like, like a, a peace for all, a goodwill for all. And uh, so I'm willing to con consider that Kanye West is one of the great masters. <laughs> You know, that they come in many forms, and, and some of those would be in some ways disguised or difficult to appreciate. You know, when we put our own uh, biases or the way we've been cultivated, uh, that we don't always receive the master in kind. We don't necessarily recognize their form. Um, but often, you know, they do things in ways that get our attention. And, and that, that's something that I, I would uh, invite all of us to consider, that the masters don't always do the things that we think they should. But they're doing things to, in some way, disturb the comfortable or uh, move things into our attention that we need to look at or consider. And maybe breathing uh, the oxygen is worth $6,000 or whatever the price tag is. <laughs> but, but tonight, I think it was relatively a uh, bargain here <laughs> to come in. <laughs> but maybe we should post it somewhere on, uh, where do you sell these things? Is it YouTube eBay. or eBay? eBay. eBay. OK. <laughs> now I've given the entrepreneur in the room maybe an opportunity like, ah, uh -uh, OK, I'll sell. Uh, the heir of the masters. <laughs> All the masters have breathed. Anything else? Thank you. Okay. Um, just, um, I'd just like to put in the light my brother Richard Holland and his continual healing and his courage as he continues. So he made it uh, where? Back to somewhere like. Uh, He's back in South Africa now. South Africa, mm -hmm. okay. And he, um, he opened his hand today for the first time, his whole hand, which was beautiful. Was, I was so proud. Right. Mm. Um, 
you know, that's, that's something, you know, obviously I think you're bringing up something that if, if we have um, any form of life on this earth, and not just human form, but all of it, you know, mineral, plant, any of the kingdoms that have congregated into the earth, that there's good purpose in all of what it is. And even if we uh, don't quite have the understanding of how to cooperate with, with how that would all work together, that there's an opportunity to move through it in whatever form that is. Um, and that, that we are those who would lend a hand so that we just sent your brother uh, the light in the way we've been doing it here tonight. And you know, there's another thing in that which would be, uh, I have had the experience that it's already done, like deja vu. Anybody else ever had that? Like, it's like, um, how could I send the light now? It's already over. But I've, I've realized, no, I'm, I'm being called to send the light even though I don't know the result. Like when people um, send me communications for the light, just in case you're wondering about this, and it's already after the fact, like uh, I'm going to have this operation on my kidney and it turns out it was two days ago at four o'clock. And then there's my mind is saying, well, why would you respond like it's too late? And then I, I have shown, no, it's not. Like, go ahead and send it. And that there's some part of it um, that the way I see it is I'm consciously being allowed a grace period to catch up to it. That that I would have sent it already, but I'm just now realizing and I'm being given the opportunity to go ahead and send it ahead of time. Maybe you followed that. Um, and this to me is when we're starting to understand that time itself um, is like an elastic band that can be stretched and moved. Uh, so that it really, there is no such thing in the eternal nature that's too late. So if it's not too late in the eternal nature, then it, now's the time. So then we could uh, send light to our Neanderthal brothers and sisters and then still get it. Then it makes sense that maybe this is what they're talking about as time travel. But it only works toward the good. And that's how I see it. So that if we consider, well, what if the forces of evil or darkness are also allowed to time travel and go back and mess it up? I don't see that as allowed. So what's allowed? Grace. Put the grace in. So that in a way we would be um, saving ourselves in this time. There's another way of looking at that, and that would be that um, people bring up the prophecies, and then you can just pass them around. Like every culture has something like prophecies in there, like people who are predicting or putting out uh, what's going to become. And let's consider that even in the timing of when they looked, it had accuracy, that we still have the opportunity to shift it toward the greater good. And when we understand where it's all going in soul, it's going to go to that greater good. So then the prophets of doom and gloom can be shifted so that in some way they might say, oh, I was just playing a character of doom and gloom. I wasn't really doing it. Uh, you know, the, the, it's almost like they would come awake on the stage and say, I was just in character. And they would take off the costume of doom and gloom, and then you'd realize they're a nice person. And they have a great sense of humor. But for the, the purpose of what was being played out, it was being played out in doom and gloom so we could wake up and realize, let's be loving, let's be caring towards one another. 
Okay. So something like uh, once upon a time I was a bartender. True. Uh, I think it was for two weeks, and then I was fired. Thank God. Uh, so last call. If you've ever been a bartender, you know what that means. So in the back there. Um, hi. Um, I have a question. How can I get rid of my guilt and worry about making mistakes? All right. Um, my Americanese ears didn't quite capture that. So if you would repeat it, I didn't quite hear the words. Um, how can I get rid of my guilt and worry about making mistakes? Is it guilt? Guilt, guilt. yeah. Guilt. OK. All right. Well, here's what you would do. You would transform what that is. And uh, I'm fine with what you mean by guilt and uh, your worries and fears, whatever that means for you. You can transform it. And the best way I know to transform it is to do what we've been doing tonight as an exercise in, in light and love, that you would send light to what is the guilt. So you would use your vision, use your imagination to see whatever that is. So the, if it's a past action, you could see it differently. And that's a fun exercise to imagine, well, how would you have liked it to be different? So guilt's about what we don't agree with about our past actions. Can you see that? It's, it's about your behavior or what you did or what you allowed that you don't agree with now. That's the guilt. So then change what occurred to what you want. And your imagination is perfect for this exercise. So just use your imagination. And it's OK that, well, this is a fantasy. Um, it didn't happen that way. It's like, that's OK. We're going to change the guilt to something like, um, I like this. I, I'm happy. I'm peaceful. Can you do that right now? OK. That's what is really needed is, is with you. And, and then the other part of it is to have a, a loving toward yourself that allows you to have adventures. So they're not mistakes. They're not regrets. They're not sins. They're adventures and that you realize as you have the adventures in your experience, you would like to change them for the better. That opportunity is present. As long as you're breathing in this world, the opportunity to transform your life for the better is here. So part of that is heal the past so you're not stuck in it by condemnation or judgment. So guilt's not your ally, it's a testing ground, showing you where you need to heal, where you need to transform what you did into a learning that then directs you into what you want to create. Anything else on that? Um, I have a sister, and she's in Vietnam. And uh, for a reason, me and my mom have to Le um, leave Vietnam and go to Australia. And apparently she has to live with my grandparents. And I'm kind of worried and anxious about how she's going because we rarely get, we rarely get to okay. talk. Yeah. So tell me what your ideal is for her. I would like you to send a blessing for her to live in peace and safe. And All right. Please. And I'm, I've got a lot of help here with these folks, so I'm going to allow all of us to do that blessing. And uh, is there anything else that if, if you had a wish for her or about her, it's okay that this is personal, this is your wish? Do you know what that might be that you could say? Yeah, I wish that she could come here with me and Mama in one day. That's, that's what I was seeing. Yeah. Okay. Now all we do with that is we go ahead and claim that for the highest good, that it, 
that that's what we would want, what would serve her or anyone else or anything involved for that to become a reality. Do you know if she wants to come here? She does. Okay. That's important. And uh, <laughs> and you don't have to name them, but if there's anybody else, they could be clerks, they could be officials um, that in your mind or her mind don't want her to come, that we also send the light to them because that can be part of it. Wherever the restriction is, be sure to include the restriction or whoever is acting in the restriction because God has a, a great wisdom often that um, it's like God's going to heal the whole family or the whole community, not just the one. So sometimes we, we think, oh, I, I, I'm praying for the one but we really need to pray more for the all. Uh, so, so we also pray for our enemies, in a way, or those who would go against us, which may seem strange. Why would I want to pray for them? Because God would know what to do with them so everyone is blessed. You know, that God is a lover of its creation. So there's no part of it that God doesn't bless. And we often are called upon to be those instruments that we would call it forward. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a military term for it. It's like, it's like they, uh, they put people out who are not actively involved in the military action, but they can help by directing what is needed and calling for what is needed. So they become important uh, to acknowledge what is needed. And those of us in the light work, the light-bearing work, are often called upon for where is the light most needed. And it's, it's most needed where there's the greatest darkness, the greatest pain, the greatest suffering. But remember, it, it won't go through you without visiting you as well. So you're going to put the light through yourself first so it can go out to everything else. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so I have one more thing that I wanted to do to complete with the evening, and it's actually one more exercise with John Roger uh, in the form of a video. Um, and then the, I think Andrew may have something more in the way of information to share with you. But for my part, uh, thank you for allowing me to share soul transcendence with you this evening and to to be with you together so that whatever is here for our blessing, it's done. Um, for those of you who are new, um, we just keep doing this. <laughs> uh, and as much as possible, moving it up uh, every day in every way. Um, uh, our founder, John Roger, uh, he moved on in the way I would call soul transcendence. He's done it, but he's also very much involved in what we're still doing here very actively. Uh, so not just my responsibility, but I think all of our responsibilities have shifted um, to a higher intensity. Um, but that's also a greater opportunity to partake. So thank you for igniting what we're doing here together uh, this weekend and for certainly for here in Australia and wherever you're watching and listening online but also uh, everywhere in the movement of spiritual and awareness so I'll say Berush Beshan and that means the blessings already are and then we're going to bring down the lights again and, uh, and follow along and you can do this as an exercise with John Roger with what he's doing so God bless you all Stay with this. You put your hand here so it keeps you kinesthetically tied to that. And then just tell yourself, this is love. This is love. This one is love. And now if there's some place in your body that doesn't feel too good, 
just have that love arc over and touch it. If you start to move away from your heart where your hand is, bring it back. Touch it again and feel it. And say, this is divinity. This is love. Here's where it is inside of me. And from my heart, my heart center, I give love to all of my body. And take that feeling and make it come awake in there because it's your divinity. It is yours. When that hits, flood your body with it and you'll find yourself being a commutator of divine energy. It'll come flooding down all around you. It is a method talked about in these seminars for years. Love is the healer. Joy is the expression. I am the love for this universe. I am the love for the universe outside of me. And all of us that are love are one. So thank you, John, and also Lee. A couple of things here, and it occurs to share with you that probably next door there's a, a number of copies of that little booklet called Manual on Using the Light. It's a little cartoony thing. So those of you who want to know a little more about that, you're most welcome to have a look at that. Uh, one day, years ago, I was talking to an eight-year-old boy and he'd had the book read to him once. And uh, I said to him, you know, when your dad's unhappy, you can just send him the light for the highest good. And he said, that's what I do. And I send it for the highest good of all concerned. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, gee, you got this down, kid. So, it's not like it's a hard do. And um, I think there'll be some copies next door. There always are. Tomorrow night, after the halfway point of the workshop of Soul Transcendence, which starts in the morning at 10 a.m., 9.30 registration, there's a JR dance celebration evening which kicks off at uh, 8.30 for those of you who'd like to shake it out a little. Maybe by then you're getting a little numb. These chairs are good but they're not that good. So that's it. Well, I've just been handed this by tomorrow's team captain and he says 8.30 or 10. All right. So there we are. We have a lot of options for balance and harmony. Eight o'clock it is. <laughs> now, there's a flyer on your chair, or there was, unless you're still all over it. It's um, a really well put together page for all the home video and audio seminar evenings. So, John Roger commentary at the top. All that you want to be, you already are. All you have to do is move your awareness there and recognize the divinity of your own soul. So if that's something you want to check into a little more, these are the places where they're offering these evenings, which are like an evening with people in an informal setting, a video, an audio, and you can check it out a little more. So other than that, tomorrow morning... Um, when you, tonight, not tomorrow morning. Make sure you don't leave any stuff behind. Gather up your things as we finish it up. And if we do find some stuff, we'll have a lost and found table here somewhere tomorrow. I don't know where. And what else have I got? I think that's it. Did I leave anything out? No, no, no. Okay. Well, good night. Thank you. Have a nice drive home. And, and those of you who are really sensitive, remember that E sound thing? Yeah. You might want to do that. 
Unless you want to do it together, that'd be easier, wouldn't it? All right, why don't you do that? Let's do it together. Because a lot of you are quite spacey from the look of your faces. Okay, nice breath. E Once more. E now you can go. I 